Hi everybody, it's crazy. It's Monday and it's time for the FBGE video of the week. Now before I get started, I gotta give a shout out to my trusted because you guys rock. To my crazy fam, I love you guys. And to my patrons, thank you for your continued support. Now we are up to episode number 29. We just got done, uh, got finished with chapter 2 and creating your very first game. Give yourself a pat on the back because you did good about building your first game and building it to completion. So you actually finished the game. Okay, so now what you got to do is learn how to do it even better. Okay, so that's what chapter, uh, the rest of the chapters are about because basically that game, the shark game, was to get you to understand the basis of it, how a game actually gets put together. Okay, so now we're going to break them all down and we're going to work work on it until you can see everything, uh, all aspects of it, and we're going to go into more detail. So without any further ado, we're up to chapter three. Yes, logic bricks. So let's get started. What makes a game different than a movie? Let's see. In both, you can find yourself buried in a comfortable seat, eating junk food, and alienated from the world. And funny 3D goggles are not exclusive to either. But what about interactivity? In, the, in a game, you can control a player and interact with the virtual or real world as, and the game elements. The story can be dynamically created in front, of you, in front of your eyes. Therefore, as a director and content creator, let me scooch over here for a second. Got to scroll that up. <laughs> content creator, you will play different roles in a movie or a game. In a movie, for example, you have to direct the flow of the story. But for a game, you have to direct how the player controls and experiences this flow. Those are the times of supercomputers to Watson's IBM Jeopardy intelligent machine. More than ever, it's time to narrow the gap between what technology can deliver and what the public can experiment with and assimilate, assimilate as part of their own nature. As Kevin Flint praised in Tron and Tron Legacy, the Disney game-related movie, and prequel, all the power, uh, all the power to the user. Okay, traditionally, to design your game interaction in the past, you would have needed coding expertise and a highly technical background. If, as a creative artist, any words such as uh, technical code and programming scare you, have confidence. Pure artists are still scared with code. The idea here is not that they will no longer be afraid of it. Instead, with the BGE, they will not have to face their fears. Logic bricks are an alternative to hardcore coding, known to be artist friendly more. Be uh, logic bricks is here to rescue you. Logic Bricks is a visual set of tools responsible for integrating the game components together. By using Logic Bricks, you can determine what to do after a mouse click, when to play an animation, how to move your character, and so on. It, uh, basically, as shown in, in the fig this figure here, you get your keyboard. It's a keyboard sensor. Okay, if you hit the space bar, okay, the AND controller will tell the action animation to play. Okay, and it'll tell what to what frame to go to to one what frame to what frame. Okay, note Logic Bricks is high level visual programming. Okay, the Logic Bricks system is composed of three main elements: sensors, controllers, and actuators. Sensors are an event system used to trigger an action upon a specific event. For example, an object collides with another object or the joystick is used. Once one or more sensors are triggered, you can use a controller to control whether or not this set of events will produce an event in the game and which effect. Controllers work as logic pipes 
evaluating sensors through simple logic conditions such as AND, OR, and NOT. Finally, when the controller validates a set of sensors, it will activate an actuator. An actuator is responsible for specific action of, a, of the game, such as ending the game, moving an object, and so on. Okay. In this chapter, you'll cover sensors, controllers, and actuators in detail specifically, how and when to use them. Additionally, you will learn about object game properties, the state machine system, how the interface works, and the architecture of the system as a whole. As a system used to build new worlds, this is no place for do's and don'ts. It will be up to you to find the best set of features that fit your object and creativity. Nevertheless, when possible, we'll present suggestions of when and how people have used the tools in the past, but you don't have to f uh, feel constrained by that. Treat logic bricks as small Lego pieces and surprise us and yourself. Leave Python at the door. Logic bricks are really easy and quick to use. You can make entire games with them, with absolutely no need for coding. General overview. Thus far, you know this whole system will allow you to create those little pieces that compose the interaction of your game. There are multiple ways to put those little parts together and even more ways to combine them. It's important to show all the possibilities, but there is a common principle a principle as to how they operate that we can look at. Simple example. Okay, let me scroll that down to there. Okay, from the book files, open a book chapter three bowling base blend. Now let's go on over to here. We're gonna put this one up. Okay, so I've already got it opened, but all you have to do is go to open and you're gonna go to your chapter three folder that comes with the uh, the files that you get for the book, okay? Um, I suggest you create your own folder because, you know, you're going to be changing them. But I just went ahead and copied them over here, and here it is, okay? Bowling base uh, blend, okay? When you open that, I've already got it open, okay? This is what you will see, all right? So, you'll have a small bowling game that includes a bowling ball, the pines and a rink for the ball to roll around in. So if we scroll out, we got the bowling ball, the pines, and a rink to roll in. Okay. All right. So the goal here is to launch the ball and keep it rolling as much as you can. If you go to the Blender game menu and start the game, you will see nothing much seems to happen. Okay. So let's go on over here. We're going to hit P for play because, you know, nope. No, no, the keys work. No, so the only key it works is escape, so you can get out. So if you press escape, it'll allow you to leave the game. That's a uh, Blender and BEG game fault. <laughs> that it automatically, if you hit escape, it will automatically kick you out. Now we've got to give an homage to these these two guys here because they actually built, you know, or made this book to help people learn the game. So. You know, kind of give them a little, uh, quite a bit of credit because they did do a lot. It's kind of old, but still not around less. It was back in February of 2013. But, hey, it's all good because these guys literally made it better for people to learn it. Okay, so here are some things you may need. A keyboard sensor to react with the keys that are pressed. That's right here. Okay, an actuator to move the ball. Okay, right here. Got your actuator. And, uh, uh, and a controller to activate the actuator when the sensor is positive, which we don't have yet. Okay, so if you select the ball, which you had already be selected when you first get in there, and you will see some of, the log uh, uh, some of those logic bricks are already there. Okay, click, uh, click on the socket by the keyboard sensor and drag the, li uh, drag the line all the way to the socket by the motion actuator. If your aim is good, this will create a, a controller to bridge the sensor to the actuator. Okay, so 
You're going to come over here, this little dot. You're going to drag it on over, and you're going to let go. Look, yep, now you got a controller right in there. Okay? So now, if you start the game again, let's hit, make sure I'm on it, hit play, and you hit the space bar. Woohoo! Okay? A few times to roll a strike. So, you, hey, I did get a strike. <laughs> okay, wonderful. All right, so... To make things more uh, more interesting, there is also a timer that will start when the game begins. If you connect the property sensor already yeah, already in the file to the same controller as the prop, uh, as the keyboard sensor, you will only be able to move the ball for a few seconds. The property sensor will be positive as long as the timer timer is inside of specific range. So the AND controller will be positive only when both keys and property sensors are positive. So we're going to take this positive, uh, this uh, property sensor, and we're going to connect it up right here. Okay, so now you have, now I'm going to bring this down so you can see. You don't want that, okay? You want it to be three, okay? There we go. If you put it on, leave it on one, then it will wind up... Uh, only going for a few seconds. So if we hit play now, yep. gotta be in it first. There we go. Okay. No, that's gonna error. Back to space. Okay. Let's go back up here, and then we hit P. No. Okay. Now it's gonna. There we go. All right. Now hit P. There we go. And you got three seconds. After three seconds, you notice that the ball stopped, and it doesn't work anymore. And I got a spare. <laughs> Okay, so, with that being said, you know, if you change this back to 1, okay, and I hit enter, there we go, and we hit play again, that's 1 second. <laughs> so, make sure you change that to 3, okay? Uh, that's just something that could possibly help you to not get frustrated in the game. Alright, so... This is a simple example, but it should get you started so that you can experiment with the available options and other logic bricks. Go ahead and change a few things, which we just did. Don't worry because nothing will break. In let's see. You can see how your final linked logic bricks may look if you select Okay, they got it in the thing over here, so let me click over to it. Hang on. It's that one. Yeah, okay. So, this is how your final brick should look. So, what we're going to do is we're going to come back over to... Let me come back over here. Let's do this. Okay. There we go. Now, we're going to come out of view. We're going to click on... We're going to hit Control. Click on... Oops. Oh, the shift. I think it should be shift. Yeah. And then your front pin. Make sure you shift that control, okay? Don't always listen to what crazy tells you. Alright, so <laughs> let's bring this up. Zoom in a little bit. So now, all we gotta do is connect it. So you can collect, connect your uh, collision because when the ball hits that pin, because that's what the pin is, okay? When it hits it, it's going to switch states and it's going to do an action. Okay, so let's do this, hit numpad zero, and we're going to hit play, and do three for three seconds. Now, you notice how it zoomed in. Okay, that zoom in, oh, no, it got scratched, yay. Okay, so you see how it zoomed in, so that's what that does, okay? So if you just click on that pine, It'll show you that that action makes the camera move forward so you can see what's going on. That's kind of neat, huh? All right. So I'm going to leave it there at that. We're up to almost 15 minutes. So uh, we're going to we'll continue on with architecture next week. Let me switch over to here. Okay. So... Now you got the basics of logic bricks, so, you know, the understanding of what they're about, okay? So you got, you know, uh, sensors, controllers, and actuators, and each one does a specific thing to make the game logic work, okay? Logic bricks are pretty fun. They're easy, you know, they're pretty well self-explanatory, and we're going to go really in-depth with that later 
to show you more about logic bricks, what each one does, so on and so forth. Okay, so we'll leave that for next week. And, uh, you know, keep on the good work. Keep trying with it. See what you can do with this little uh, this little bowling game. And some stuff you can come up with, like hook shots and stuff like that. I think that would be kind of cool. Um, if you come up with any good ideas, hey, post them down there in the comments. You know, give us a link. Or drop on over to the server and drop, a, drop us a video of your idea of what you've done. Uh, but other than that, that's all we got for this week. So, see you next week.